How's it going everyone? So huge news for Path of Exile players today. They've released a patch with a beta of the Vulcan API. So this is awesome because if you don't know much about Vulcan, it reduces CPU overhead and gives more direct control over the GPU. So the CPU does not have to process certain graphics work for the shaders and, and whatnot coming for the game before it can get pushed through to the GPU. It can basically just push it all through and the GPU can just do the work directly. And what this does is it'll free up CPU cycles to do the calculations, which PoE is heavy on, like the damage calculations and, you know, atom drops, all of that. And so this will balance balance the load better. So the, the CPU is doing more CPU intensive work and it's not holding up work that the GP, for the GPU to process, which was causing stutter. And they literally describe how their, how their game processes it. So in DirectX 11 backend, the shader uploads happen on the background threads of the CPU. And the graphics driver for AMD, NVIDIA, or Intel, that that shader shader work has to be processed before the GPU can use them on DirectX 11. So when the CPU usage is high for doing game calculations, it'll actually cause stutter because it's not calculating, it's not pushing through work for the GPU because it's too busy doing another thing. So with a with Vulkan, this should basically balance the load much better, and they explain it all here on this on this thread on the 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 patch update note and you can see down here that they're expecting even though they're still optimizing and still working on it they barely began to scratch the surface and you may find it's it's running slightly lower fps but the frame rate stability which is what's important the stutter uh the difference could already be make it worth using so to actually make this video have some content that's worth watching what i've done is i've just quickly bought a few enriched breach stones. Now this isn't a end game, you know, full party pure breach stone like or end game content test. This is more for consistency. I'm gonna benchmark three runs in DirectX 11, which it's running at here, and then I'm gonna benchmark three runs in Vulcan to literally show if there's any difference, at least on my system, which is a 6700K RX 5700 and 2x8 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3000 megahertz C16. So now that you know my specs, I'm also running more of a competitive setting or high, high, ma maximum FPS setting because I'm running at a high resolution close to 4K. So ultra wide 3440 by 1440. And I've turned settings that normally wouldn't be a big deal on lower resolutions tend to impact ultra wide a bit more, at least with this graphics card. And I have tested this on my own. So, you know, even though sun shadows and number of lights, the defaults are higher. And it says here they, they don't really make much of a difference and, and even with a lot of action on the screen they still seem to make a difference enough for me uh, running it ultra wide and you can see here texture filtering is another one that a lot of people will make a big deal on it's not 16 it has no performance yet on 16 that may be true at low resolutions but at high resolutions it's an unnecessary load that doesn't need to be there because the game will already hit 99 percent usage in some cases or above 90 percent even with times two anisotropic and you can't notice anisotropic that easily in this game maybe the edge there on that lamp is something you might notice and turning it up to 16 might help smooth out that no it doesn't even doesn't even help because it's a texture quality and texture size issue so at this resolution the game is already has a lot more clarity than 1080p so i don't need to run this because it doesn't seem to do anything and i don't zoom in that often to literally stare at the top of this guy's hood and even if i do max out anisotropic it doesn't make a big difference what will make a difference is if i turn on low or high anti-aliasing that'll make a big difference but anisotropic not so much not in the not in the realm of noticeable differences anyway so but i keep that off because yeah it does it does low, drop the fps by a noticeable amount like around 20 and my one percent low at these current settings Normally I run an FPS cap of 80 because 1% lows are the more noticeable FPS drops that you'll notice that you'll see and I normally get a 1% low around 80. So I just cap my FPS at 80 because that basically gives more consistency to my gameplay rather than running uncapped with the GPU pegged at 99. But for this test I've actually uncapped the FPS and turned off my normal 80 cap just so that if Vulcan is improving anywhere we'll be able to see it a lot better because you can't see an improvement on the 1% low if my 1% low is on average around 80 FPS or my minimums are around 80 FPS I should say then we won't see that with an FPS cap on so yeah not my 1% low sorry my minimums where 
80, around 80, and that's what I was noticing. So if you want the results, just check the comments. I'm just going to post it all there so you can skip to that. And anyone that doesn't have time to watch the whole video and listen to me talk probably would have already checked the comments anyway, and you'll see the benchmark results there. And to show you how I benchmark, I'm going to launch my breach stone, and as soon as I start fighting and clearing the, the breach stone, which is very linear, you know, it's, a, it's, it's really an easy way to do apples to apples. And that's the main reason I'm not doing a full party thing is because you get so many different builds with different effects, it's going to affect the consistency of the results. So I'm just going to run these. I wasn't rich enough to get pure breach zone, sorry about that. And when I run the benchmark, it will appear in this file, and it'll show you the time, like how long I ran it, and the minimum, the 1%, the average, the max. So you see it all there. So now that I've showed you my settings and everything, here we go. So I'm going to do three runs. Three runs, DirectX 11, and then three runs in Vulkan. And hopefully I can switch between those APIs. I'm running in full screen windowed mode, and that should allow me to switch API without ruining the video. Because if you're playing in full screen mode and you mess with API and you're recording with Relive, it can tend to sometimes cause a black screen or you know some other issue. That happened on NVIDIA as well if you're playing with APIs. So hopefully I can just record this with no issues. So as soon as I hit this breach, that's when I'm going to hit F7 to start my, my benchmark, and then I'll end it when I get to the boss portal. But I'm not going to go in the portal because it's a transition, and that'll artificially drop the the result of the 1% and the 0.1. Okay, so here we go. One other good thing, though, is a lot of benchmarks, some of them run their benchmark too, sh too short. Like, they'll run a, they'll run a benchmark at... For 30 seconds or a minute and while that might seem like it can give you an apples to apples performance idea when you run a benchmark for longer it's actually going to give you a much more consistent result as opposed to running a quick benchmark so if i run a benchmark for five minutes seven minutes and ten minutes just for example even though they're different lengths of time those three benchmarks are going to be much more consistent for average like for your minimums and your your average performance than doing three two minute benchmarks which basically you're working off a smaller sample size and the reason benchmark sites do that is to save time because they run like 30 different tests 30 different graphics cards type of thing but if you're just testing the one system like my my setup for example then running a full clear of a bridge stone is is going to be much more reliable than doing 30 to one minute runs at different settings and things like that. So I am just running a Gladiator Facebreaker build, if you didn't know. But this is more for giving people who don't have time to play or don't know how to benchmark, giving them a reference to see if Vulcan's worth switching to in its current state. If you've got specs similar to mine, this should also be fairly indicative of performance. So that was the end. So F8. This should also be fairly indicative of performance if you're running a 6-core CPU, so one of the newer 8th uh, gen i5 and up, or if you're running Ryzen, around Ryzen, I'll say 3600, because there are benchmarks showing that the 7700K gets pretty close to 3600 performance. But the minimums will be lower. So if you're on Ryzen 3600, I would expect the minimums to be much better. So that was one run. And you can see here, this is where the benchmark appears. So that was pretty bad. But I also noticed in other tests that I've done is that the first time I run a map, sometimes it'll be loading into, like loading map data that will cause a lower FPS on the first run. So second run, you might see that the 1% lows and the 0.1 are higher, as well as the average and the minimum, well everything basically, uh, and then the third run should be more consistent to the second run. So that's why I'm doing three runs and not two runs, because you're going to just have two different results. And the third run gives us, it makes, basically verifies that the, the results are accurate by the third, third run. So close that. Now I'm going to kill the boss because I'm already here. And it's like a waste not to do it, right? And then we're going to do the second run. 
for a bit. You can also see on that on that run, it gives me the time. So that was a 105 second run. So a little over a minute. Not as long as I'd like, but it should still be enough to get some usable data. So we're going to run again. I was originally going to use a unique map for this, but the unique maps still have variation in the layout. So, which is a bit bit frustrating. I was testing Acton's Nightmare and it wasn't the same every time. So, Zoff's Domain. This is much closer to consistent consistent runs. Okay, let's go. But you'll see th the FPS drop is basically CPU having to balance calculations with the with the shader loading and whatever else it's doing that it has to push through the GPU first. The GPU has to wait for that, and that causes FPS drop. It's waiting for the CPU because the CPU is doing too much. Even though the CPU usage has plenty of room, like you can see, it's not near 100%, there should be room there for it, but it's the way that the game's using the threads and doing the calls. So this is a bit tedious. I don't know if I'll edit this video and put it in fast forward just so people can get the results quicker. But I would just advise you to skip to the end or check the comments if you want to see all the results straight away. But I guess uploading all of it uh, leaves no room for misinterpretation or people saying that I didn't actually test because there are people that will post benchmarks with no raw video of them testing like actually running the benchmark so what what that does is it leaves the door open for people that just want to get youtube hits like for example if this is a hot topic and they want youtube hits they could literally just post a video with graphs of areas or for example they give the game and then they give the fps difference but there's there may not have been any testing done they've just taken that data from some other website or made it up so that's why I don't like to do that. Otherwise, I would have tons of benchmark performance videos that I've just can just pilfer the results from different websites. So that was the end and fate. So you can see here it should appear there. So that was a little bit longer, but as you can see, the everything went up by around 10 FPS. So that was actually a pretty linear in increase. So 17 to 25, 47 to 57 and 77 to 83 though the minimum was roughly the same so now what I'm expecting with this third run is to be much closer to the second run so you can see the times here as well 1633 so this is in like army time but in my time it's you can see here this is when I'm running it so you can't really say that I've somehow doctored this in some way and now I'm going to kill the boss and then do the third run. Didn't have my pots up. Is that worth anything? I don't know. Maybe I should just grab it anyway. If anyone wants that bow, just PM me in game. And I'll, I'll put it in one of my stash tabs. Just to give it away to a player that, that needs a bow. A, a kind of not optimized bow. Anyway, so this is the third and final DirectX 11 run. Someone's got to do it right. Alrighty, here we go. up there. I know I'm leaving a lot of mobs behind, but I just want to keep up with the portal and try to keep the gameplay fairly close to what I was doing the other two runs, which is just killing what I can see, but also trying to follow the portal line without doubling back too much.
Now another thing that does cause FPS drop in really juiced maps is when there's a ton of white items on the ground. I'm sure a lot of people experience it. You press ALT and your game literally stutters for a little bit, like there's a stutter when you hit the ALT button. I'm not testing that because there's too much variation on the on the drops on what could cause it and it really only happens in super juiced maps. It doesn't seem to happen in in a map like this in a breach because there's not enough items dropping and we don't have the delirium to worry about so i might try to ju get some juice traps up get some delirium orbs and you know multiple copies of the same map with full delirium for testing maybe not t16 but so that was it sometimes i have to hit a cancel button a few times so i might try to do that but, yeah, it would take a bit more setting up. Like, I just went and bought these right before doing the video. I don't have any Delirium Orbs to set up. So if anyone wants to donate for that kind of test, then I'll feel free to just PM me in-game. I'm Dualization. Because he's a Dualist. And let's just see that third lot of benchmarks. So that was... Wait a second. Something didn't didn't run properly. Ah, oh, because I hit F7 twice by accident. I hit F7 at the end of that run. Okay, we're gonna. It's all right. I can still salvage this. I'm gonna delete that, and I'm gonna run one of my <laughs> one more of my enriched breach stones. Sorry guys, I hit F7 right at the end when I was meant to hit F8, I accidentally hit F7 and what that does is it restarts the same benchmark. And that's why it was showing such a low number. So that was a waste. Oh. Actually need more... Zoffs enriched reach stone. I've been overpaying for these, I was like paying 18 C each. Oh well, that's, that's, that's the ones that reply to me. Going broke doing this. Tell me someone will reply real quick. I don't want to spend ages making you guys watch me try to get a breach stone. I should have accounted for the fact that this might happen. Oh no, this guy replied. Okay. If I can get one for 15, I'll grab another one. Just in case something happens with Vulcan. There we go. So that's my three runs. What the heck? Okay, so let's do that again and hopefully I'll do it properly. It was a waste of a run, kind of frustrating because I like to do my videos in one take. But now you can see what goes wrong. See, if that was a, if this was a one take video, I would have had to restart it. But I'm, like, if I wanted it to be perfect, but just have to make sure I hit my F8 button properly this time.
Okay, so that was the end. F8, right? F8, F8, F8. There we go. That was basically the end. Okay, let's make sure that that actually ran properly. That's really frustrating. There we go. So 102 seconds and 20, 50, 154. At the very least, the minimum and the average are consistent, but there's a little bit of discrepancy. It's not massive. A little bit of discrepancy with the 1% low and 0 0.1, but that could also be related to just how fast I was doing the clear. But ballpark within 10 FPS, FPS of each other, so margin of error, I suppose you could you could say, because the minimums are still consistent. Okay, I'll just quickly kill the boss. Another bow. Okay, now we're gonna switch to Vulcan. Now I would normally do another run after that actually, because that kind of bugs me that there was such a discrepancy, but again, with the 1% and 0.1% lows, they can be affected rather easily just by having something spawned that was slightly more intensive in one map over the other. But at the very least, the, this was the lowest run as I said, and these two, while they didn't have much consistency with these 1% lows and 0.1, the average and the minimum were fairly close within a couple of FPS of each other. So I can I can use that as that's enough of a that's enough reasoning to say that it's usable usable data. These two are like I said, first run lower, second and third run very close uh, to the same performance. And I did have to go to another person's hideout that might have caused something to get shifted from the memory. I don't know. But that, that's that's good enough, plus the timing was a little bit off. Maybe if I had gone to 110 and done it a little bit slower, then that 1% low would have been higher, because I was rushing a little bit more because of that failed run. So anyway, that's the DirectX 11 result. And, you know, sorry this isn't as super professional as some, place, some sites would do it. Because, you know, they'll actually... It, well, at least with first-person shooter titles... Uh, when they make custom benchmarks, the review sites will actually try to walk through the same scene exactly the same way. And that's a little bit harder with this because you get random spawns and mobs. And if I try to use exactly the same route when there's a large pack of mobs to my right, then the timer is going and I'm not killing as many mobs as I normally would have. Because the mob density spawns in slightly different areas as you go through the map. Even though it's basically the same layout and the same type of mobs. So... There's that, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, see how we can't change it? I'll have to go out. But at least they give that, they give the same description, more consistent performance, especially under high CPU load, which the game has. So we're going to go to the, where would I do this to? Character selection. So from here, it should let me change it. Yep. Vulcan beta. Now the game will probably close and have to relaunch. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh! It was able to just literally switch within the same... Yeah! It literally used the same executable that was already running. I don't know how it did that. That's interesting. That's cool. Interesting, but cool. And I forgot to mention in the earlier part of the video, if you want to see the CPU usage because the benchmark isn't capturing that, you'll have to click back in the video to see what it was like. Uh, we're going to find out right now, though, if there's a difference. But that already looks lower, even just at the, the menu, if that's possible. So back into the game. No, it's back up around the same. It's, it's around 40 to 50% is what it sits on with my CPU on DirectX 11. But we'll see what that looks like in in game like in during during the breach stops so i'm just going to do a quick test here f7 1 2 3 4 5 f8 and we're going to just make sure that it's going to capture the vulcan so you see it's using the same exe you can see it there and the time is 450 so 1650 literally it's using the same executable to somehow convert from DirectX 11 to... Normally there's separate EXE, so it'll be like a Vulcan EXE with other games. 
or a Vulcan switch, I guess. So it's almost the same thing. It, it's really neat though that they did it that way. That they just you don't have to relaunch the game. It it does it for you. So now we'll do the Vulcan runs. So just make sure that nothing else has changed in my settings. Yeah, it's all. It didn't change anything from the looks of it. I think I had the texture quality on high. Anywho, let's get to it. So we'll see if it has the same thing as well with loading shaders into the, you know, from for the GPU, uh, the first run. But again, I don't know because we did previous runs and that data might still be in the GPU or in the, the system memory. But exiting out to the character selection and changing API might have cleared it. I don't know. Or if or if Vulcan has to load its own, then we're going to get one lower performance run, and then the next two should have fairly consistent, at least on the minimums, fairly consistent results. So here we go. Had to pick that up. I have a unique tab and I try to fill it. So, as they said, the performance is still in early stages of optimization. But the consistency, the improvement in consistency from, from balancing the GPU and CPU load better should already be noticeable. That's basically the... That's the basic... Oh, I gotta hurry up here. That's the basic gist of what they're trying to tell us in that forum post. And looking at it now, like, as we're going through this run, look at that 1% 0.1. Like, blatant, it's really obvious that it's much better. And the frame time graph has got spikes, but minor spikes. Like, they're not as big. That frame time graph looks a lot more consistent. It's still a bit rough, but you can see the graph there. It's just way smoother. Even with the little, the roughness around the edges. Okay, and F8. Who's was at the portal? Oh, F8, 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 come on. Okay, so hopefully that was... That was enough. But yeah, I'm, I'm just... I was like just glancing over and... The, the format of the font changed for Vulcan. Look at this. It's actually not as nice to look at. But everything else looks about the same. Anyway. The CPU usage... I wasn't staring at it. I'm going to rewatch this video after for sure. And the RAM usage, I haven't looked if it's changed at all. But we can see here that first run 102 seconds, 87, 87, or a little bit lower on the minimum, and much better on the 0 0.1, which none of these 0 0.1s of three runs hit into the 30s. But the 1% low wasn't much better either. But this is the one that. I mean, wh when you get severe stutter, it's going to be one of these two, more than likely. And then if you're getting constant stutter, it's the minimum that'll be too low. But that felt, to be honest, all the runs felt fairly smooth. But looking at this, I would rather have a higher 1% low looking at the difference in 1% low. That's 14 FPS higher. Or at least 10, 10 to 14 FPS higher. Or more than 10 FPS consistently. To that and we're gonna see maybe that was even only the first one maybe it'll get better after the second one because I do believe Vulcan does have different files it'll use it has a different shader cache so we might see an improvement further in the next two runs but we'll kill the boss now oh I was in blood stance the whole time oh see that loading that was Vulcan <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm gonna forgive that that was because you know if, if you've played 
other titles like Dota 2 with Vulcan, stuff like that happens, uh, especially when they first implemented it. And that's just something that they will optimize in the future. And that could have just been the first run, but we'll see. The next on the next run, I'll go to the boss room. We'll see if it does that that again, loading in the the, the boss room basically. It hadn't loaded it yet. Okay, so run number two. And I'm going to make sure I'm in sand stance this time. I don't know if that'll really affect the result. But I was in sand stance for clearing for the first three runs. So, yeah. Here we go. So if Vulcan was loading up files for the first run, this run will be much better. I'm, I'm hoping that it'll be much better. But we have seen a 0.1% increase in performance so far. It could be placebo, but it feels a little bit smoother in terms of input latency. I don't know why. Uh, more consistent performance could do that, I guess. Because input latency where you move the mouse and you feel the character move is also tied to frame rate. If you're getting a lot of FPS drop or you're running a lower overall FPS, then your input latency will feel more sluggish or inconsistent, basically. Like you'll move and then it'll move, it'll follow your mouse, and then another time you'll move, and it'll take a, a second longer to, to actually do it if you're running low FPS. But yeah, we're gonna see, we're gonna test this theory. We're gonna see if the second and third run end up with higher results. And this is why I'm doing three runs and not just one run of each, because then we definitely would have nothing to go off. Would, it would just be a waste of time because of that loading, that initial loading it does for the first run. This run definitely feels much better for me. Possible placebo aside, it feels better as I'm clearing the mobs the input latency feels good. Anyway, F8. And we'll see if that boss room thing happens. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the boss room and see if this weird textures around the outside have to load in. Yeah, it did it a lot quicker that time, but it looks like they have to optimize. They have admitted it's still in beta. Whoops. <laughs> I had my portal shield out. Oh, what's that? Is that good? I think that's a 70% move speed boots. The, the card that just dropped. Okay. So yeah, that, that's an interesting quirk of, of Vulcan in the early like in their early development. They have an optimized texture loading, like especially for boss rooms. Because we noticed that straight away. And hopefully they get it. I, I don't know that they said that they appreciate people like in the forum post if you can report bugs and stuff like that. So I don't know. Maybe that's something I can report to help them optimize Vulcan more. But anyway, we're going to go back into here. And there was a definite improvement. So that first run was the same thing we saw in the first run of DirectX 11. Loading data, map data for the first time causes lower FPS and then subsequent runs are all consistently higher. Like even when it's lower than the second run, see the third run was still higher than the first. So basically the second and third are, are higher overall. And as we can see here, the first run was still better in my opinion than, than the small reduction in minimum and 1%. The increase is bigger on the average and 0.1 on that first run compared to the loaded run and it's like if we compare this first run to this it's a lot better on 0 0.1 the only discrepancy is minimum and minimum on the first run it was a bit lower on Vulcan for that first run but then if we go to the second run it beats DirectX 11 across the board everything is higher so that was a 103 second run so 9320 frames of data it rendered more frames as you can see here. So even the longer run that was 110 was still lower in total frames rendered, which is basically why the average and everything was higher. Even the max is noticeably higher in in this 
second Vulcan run. So you guys can interpret that for yourselves, but just look at that. That is beautiful. Look at that. 14 FPS higher than on the 1% low. It was 14 FPS higher. The second... Oh no, that was still fairly good. The second run here of DirectX 11 was still good. It was higher than that. But then it loses in all the other areas. It had lower... So these are the two to compare. It's this... If we're comparing second run of Vulcan, second run of DirectX 11. It's 83 to 90, 52 to 56, 147 to 162. So much, much higher. 1% has a discrepancy like a, a few FPS lower but considering the 0 0.1 is another you know 10 13 percent or so higher uh, 13 frames higher that more than makes up for a slight reduction in zero uh, in one percent but again these two you're not going to notice so much it's more for testing purposes and this one you'll notice and this one you'll notice the max you also won't notice that much because that's in lo low intensity scenes these two are the ones that you want to look at for the most part and they're all much better they're both much better so now we're gonna do the final run and see make sure that that's consistent results so here we go W F eight I will I'm probably gonna go back and rewatch this video on my own uh, and actually run two copies of this video side by side so that I can have the DirectX eleven running on the left and DirectX 12 running on the right for the third run both on the third run like I'll have to put some timestamps for everyone's reference and so I can stare at the CPU usage combined with the frame time graph as you can see the frame latency graph uh, to see how those are performing side by side would be interesting to say the least I could even edit this video and get a side-by-side -side clip so I'll have this uploaded and then I'm gonna try to put a side-by-side -side video of DirectX 11 versus Vulcan although it's not that necessary it's more just for viewer pleasure <laughs> But the benchmark results more than cover that. Like that's the whole reason I, I I'm doing the benchmark, so you can actually just look at the numbers without having to stare at two different screens, like two different runs running side by side. You have to like look left and look right, and you can't without pausing. You can't really get a good idea of the differences in performance. So when you have proper benchmarks that have been taken, and okay, so there we go. And we'll see the third run. This is the third run entering the boss room. Yeah, it was a lot quicker than the first. The very first time was really slow. Not that it's much of an issue, but it, if that does bug you, at least you know it's because it's early. And I'm going to definitely be reporting that to GGG. So, close that window, reopen it. So the last run, 1704, that should be 504, yeah. So 109 seconds was a bit longer than the other ones, probably more comparable to the 110 second run. But again, this is margin of error, so unless the difference is huge, if it's within a couple of FPS, you could also put it down to the varying lengths of time. But the interesting thing is, for 109 seconds, it rendered less frames than the second run. So this is a much lower result, the average was much lower. I don't know why that is. It could be the way it's caching something, or they, you know, optimization related. But at the very least, we let's just take a look at the consistency of these two indicators here. 
50 and 37 versus the last run of DirectX 11, which also saw a performance drop actually on the on the 1%, 0.1. See how this is lower than this? So that's a bit weird, like this is also lower on the third run. As, as much as I was trying to make the runs as similar as possible. Um, but at the same time, 37 is still higher than all of the Directrix 11 runs. So we're seeing the 1% low on all three Vulcan runs is destroying the 1% low on the DirectX 11 runs. The 1% low, uh, 0 0.1, sorry. The 1% low on on the Vulcan runs here is comparable, I would like to say. So 50.6, 50.9, 57.6 on the second run, 54.4. So, you know, within three FPS. And then we're looking at this important minimum, which 56, 52, apart from the first run where the minimum was a bit lower. So if you're running different maps constantly, DirectX 11 might still be better if you've got a fairly decent 8-thread CPU. But if you're doing multiple runs of the same map over and over, after that first run, you're going to get better minimums with Vulcan for sure. So we can see that here. So 52 and 51, 56 and 50. So it's within, within margin, but then you've got this 0 0.1 also to go off. But that was a bit weird because see here this last one we've got 79 on the average and 50 on the minimum so the average is a fair bit lower that's around DirectX 11 performance but I mean that's the point of the test is so that you can see how 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 they're performing and and if there are differences and how big they are I don't think the three to four FPS discrepancies are a big deal so if you look at this, because you know I wasn't doing a perfectly timed run every time, but if you look at these minimums here, if we take the worst minimum of the loaded runs, it was 50, and of the loaded runs here, the worst was 51. So that's only one, one FPS difference, right? So these two here is what we want to look at, the worst result. And then if we take the worst result of Vulcan's 0.1, not including the loaded, the worst was 37.7, right? But the worst on the loaded runs of DirectX 11 was 20, so 17 FPS. So here we're only seeing, you know, we could literally say that that's one FPS difference, like not, you know, rounded down, rounded up, whatever. We'll just say it's one FPS because this is actually very close to 51. If we round, if we round up, this would be 51, and if we round down, because it's lower. Uh, then this would be 51, right? If we remove, yeah, but anyway, within one FPS of each other, and then if we look here, it's literally like 17 FPS, plus 17 on the 0 0.1, and then if we go to 1% lows, the worst result was the third run again, and that's 50.6, and the worst result for DirectX 11 on the loaded runs, because I'm not counting the first run, so th these first runs are are not they're just to show that there is a performance drop on the first run so how can I I can't change color in notepad <laughs> but anyway so the worst result was 50.6 and then the worst result on DirectX 11's loaded runs was 50.9 so again within within one one FPS of each other on these so the big difference and then even if we compare, like we'll compare the worst result, which was 79. For some reason, it was a bit lower than, like that was way better on that second run. But for some reason, it was 79. I don't know why. Uh, teething issues with Vulcan. But we're just going to say that that's only a 5 FPS difference for average. And anything could have caused that, really. So... I don't know why I'm putting 5 here. So plus 5 FPS, roughly, from 79. And basically within 1 FPS, it's not really a something. I wouldn't say plus 1 FPS higher necessarily because it's just it's within an FPS of each other. It's not even a full FPS difference, 0.7 to 
51.2 because this is so close to 51 so and within one fps of each other here that's why I've, I've listed it but this one's plus 17 so we're looking at plus 17 fps which is even though it's a 0.1 which you probably won't notice that is frame rate consistency related much more than average to be honest the, the type of stutter that you'll feel is going to be an fps drop more to do with minimums or 0.1s rather than the average so average is is like in order of importance i would say minimums the one percent 0.1 are all very important probably the one percent are the most important which there's virtually no difference but if we're just looking at raw numbers yeah the one percent being 17 higher on vulcan is is a definite improvement and this is in beta so just keep that in mind guys this is in beta this is like they've just launched it and they're still sorting out bugs which they've they've mentioned patch 3.d wait patch 10.2 sorry but yeah beta renderer so there may be issues report any rendering bugs you encounter in bug reports forum don't play hardcore <laughs> if you're worried about something because something it could even crash because it's still but the fact that it's in beta and it's doing so well is, is just that's awesome because we did not get any 0.1s on the on the Vulcan side we did not none of these are lower on the 0.1 than DirectX 11 which has abysmal like the, even the first run we were already at 34 so that's saying something on frame rate consistency on those spikes that you'll see in the frame time graph so anyway guys uh, that's it thanks for watching if you have any ideas or you want to donate some particular map you want me to test I would need multiple coffee copies of it I'm not that rich in game this is my only delirium character so sorry as you can see here this is all I've got apart from the gear I'm wearing which is decent gear but it's just a face breaker it's not like a hundred X build so yeah, uh, I've got 2x left and 100 chaos orbs. A lot of my money went into my clusters, which is, even this one is not perfect. It's missing its third third notable. So I'm still trying to get, I'm trying to get deep cuts, martial prowess, and veteran defender to boost resist so that I can drop resist on certain pieces of my gear and balance, you know, min-maxing. But basically, yeah, this is, this is how much I've got. And so I can't afford to just go out and buy six pure breach stones or you know test whatever i want easily without going broke doing it and i might even die so uh, well actually what i wanted to test is max delirium because delirium is one of the fps drop factors and i think testing uh the same map that has roughly the same layout something like dark forest if i can find it which tier is dark forest carcass is it t15 Probably just like looking right at it and not realizing. Could even be T14. He's alphabetical, right? There it is. So Dark Forest, that's that's the one it looked like. Oh, I've got it here, that's why they weren't showing up. I knew it was there was a T16 one, see that? It wasn't showing up because I had it withdrawn. Um <laughs> but yeah, Dark Forest uh, is fairly consistent in the layout. So if I could get multiple Dark Forests, I've only got these two T16 ones, and I can't mix tiers when testing. If I could get five more and Delirium Orbs, because this is normally where I put my Deliriums, I've only got these two here. I've got a Singular and a Fine Delirium. And even though I've got a lot of tabs... Uh, either way, if I can get donations, that helps. If you want to donate Delirium Orbs, I will probably try to run the same Delirium Orb, just to keep it consistent. With the type, because when when drops happen, it also affects the frame rate when a bunch of stuff stuff drops. So I also would want to run roughly the same delirium, and not have like something that only drops one piece of armor compared to something that drops five pieces of currency. Uh, I'll try to run the same one rather than mixing them too much because that that will cause more discrepancy. So depending on if anyone can help me out or if I can just find it, maybe I'll find 
some trades. I'll look for how much these cost. I'm sure they're not super expensive. Maybe I would stick with unique items type because that's going to be less discrepant to the way that currency drops. Currency tends to drop like a bunch of random currency and that's going to be more inconsistent than a couple of unique items. Just the amount is going to be different. So maybe singular delirium orbs I could... how much are these worth? I don't have my trade macro running. Yeah, I don't. Um, anyway, I will try to get multiple, whether whether there's donations or not, I'll try to get multiple singular deliriums and I'll have to load up six maps to test properly. At least six, because I don't want to have the one loading map and then one good map run. And then that would only be a sample size of four. And then the first two will be, you know, not really that usable. So I will try to load up like that. And I think the best way to do it as well, even though it's delirium, it seems like a waste not to do them rare. But you can see how the rare modifiers can affect the. As long as it's not affecting pack size, but see the pack size, 32%. And then if I run this one rare, just as an example. 26% see that discrepancy and even the item quantity is too different so the safest way to run it apples to apples would be to scour it and then run white maps which is kind of lame but if I want to test delirium I can so that's not going to give me a drastically different see the way that's doing it even between two two magical rolls seven and the quantity item quantity will also affect the frame rate so 19 and seven and then see between different roles it's not consistent i would also have to run if i want to do this test i'm gonna to have to run delirium white maps and i'll need just to arrange two more and i'll probably try to run 100 percent delirium but the fact that it'll it won't be rare might actually help with my survivability i i don't know if i can survive 100 percent delirium but for testing maybe i'll do 80 percent delirium at the very least. So I'll do 80 and then 3 runs 80%. So I'll need a bunch of of those delirium orbs. But that can be for a future video. Uh, if this helps you or if you know if you learned anything then thanks for watching and leave a like and possibly subscribe. And if this was flawed in some way, if these tests were not that great, please rather than just criticize my testing method, just tell me what to do and I'll I'll try to adjust so that I can please everyone. Okay, thanks for watching guys. See ya.